Konnichiwa! So today we are in Notsuke Hanto or Notsuke Peninsula, otherwise affectionately known as the end of the world. It is a site that is very unique to Hokkaido and we are here with thanks to Wetlands International Japan and the Ramsar Regional Center yeah. East Asia. So today we are going to show you a little bit around the wetlands and let you know why you should visit before it's too late. The term Noske actually comes from the local indigenous Ainu language, meaning the lower jaw of a whale. So the shape of this sand pit, which is the biggest in Japan, is the shape of a jaw. And we can drive for 26 kilometers of it. And some rare nature. Did you see the bird? Yeah, I did. We literally just saw uh, our first bit of wildlife, some kind of like the eagle, perhaps. Oh, look more like a falcon type thing or a kite to me. Apparently, on this side you can see Odaito Bay, and on this side you can see the sea. So at some point it gets so small that it looks like you're basically just driving along with the sea on both sides. Yeah. So those flowers, the yellow one. Those are Ezo daylilies and the pink ones I think are called beach rose. Whoa, whoa, some kind of bird. Uh-huh. Yeah. What are you? Oh. So we have arrived at our first destination along Noske Peninsula. Yeah. You can kind of start to understand why it is nicknamed the end of the world. <laughs> uh -huh. So this entire bay, including the area behind me, Narawara, is part of a Ramsar site. So for anyone who does not know what a Ramsar site is, you might have seen one in one of our previous videos without even knowing it. So in 1971, the Ramsar Convention was created. It's an international treaty to preserve wildlife areas just like this one. There are 172 countries that have signed the treaty, and in Japan, there are 53 different Ramsar sites. In order to be considered internationally important and be part of the Ramsar Convention, a wetlands area needs to check off at least one of nine different criteria. This one in particular is an important breeding ground for over 200 different migratory bird species, as well as seals, foxes, deer, and a whole load of different flora and fauna. So despite its dead appearance, there is actually a lot of life at the end of the world. So it used to be like green everywhere here, right? Yeah, like 300 years ago or something, this whole entire area was green. And then these Narawara trees, so what are they called? Mizunara. Because of all the subsidence and the erosion, eventually all of this is basically going to be nothing. So those trees have already died and been bleached by all of the sand. That tree is like really real. Can it's real. It's like a really striking kind of feeling. It feels like the end of the world. <laughs> this view that we can see today is basically never going to be the same. Isn't that weird? That's a lot. That's a lot. So all of that, yeah, it's kind of crazy to think. So this is ending. Yeah. You are seeing like the end of the world. So a little known fact that I had no idea about until today actually is that wetlands absorb more carbon dioxide than all of the world's forests combined. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> right. So although it looks dead, it's helping us. To live. <laughs> <laughs> so we have made next it spot. <laughs> to our next spot, yeah. Kodawara. So wide. Right. And then we just went to the nature center. So they have a lot of cool stuff inside. They have an entire yeah. second floor exhibition of yeah. what you can see in this area, how the wetlands have changed over time and what we might be able to see today. So along this walk, we are gonna see some more dead trees and hopefully some very alive animals. <laughs> what? Ah. Flowers. Loads of them. Mm -hmm. Oh, they smell nice, don't they? Yeah. Oh, lots of flowers actually. So you can see Ojirowashi there, right? Yeah. The last spot. I think that's what we might have seen while we were driving. True. It's like 
already started he just yeah. in the middle of all of this so green and then so white ah <laughs> uh. oh, that is huge you're so fluffy Mossy, right? yeah hi like a little hairy cucumber <laughs> whoa so big it will be <laughs> wow Oh yeah, oh wow, you can see it all the way from here. So 3,000 years ago, it looked like that. And over time, sand has drifted to make the whale jaw. So we are on the E now. Just there. Hi, it's washed up. Hi. Wada wada. It does look very like apocalyptic that there's just those bits of wood, right? They decorate it, right? Yeah, kind of. And from here, they have like a wood path. And then in that direction, you can take a little tractor bus. So if you don't feel like walking all that way, that's to go. You can get to this part by bus. And over there, there's some like tiny trees. just saw in Narawala, right? It was in Nara, which is Todomats. And we were just over there, right? We saw like some birds. Yeah, so over there somewhere is Aosagi, the grey heron. Seeing that, it's kind of a, a reminder of the importance of wetlands and Ramsar sites and places like this. Next spot, next to here. It's going in. I'm close to you. Look at them, they're all like looking over here. Are they real? Are oh, they not real? Huh? Oh, no, it's real, it's real. <laughs> Just some frolicking deers. God, there's loads of them. I thought it's a panel. Right? It's so still. I thought like someone had made it just to sort of scare away something, I don't know. Maybe they are still because they have so many kids. Little bambies. Yeah. <laughs> Nice wood smell. Baby ducks. That is so cute. Look. <laughs> So we have rocked up at Odaito Pudeai campsite yep. just opposite Notsuke Peninsula. So all of this here is the Notsuke Bay area and it's so close that we can literally stand on it. If you're really really lucky on summer months you can see seals somewhere in here and also Otasebune which is a special kind of shrimp fishing boat. Unfortunately yeah. we cannot see any today but we have the Our shrimp. local produce. So Hokkaido shrimp, these striped shrimp are famous in this area. They rely on all of this eel grass and this very shallow water for life. <laughs> they are a limited marine catch. They can only be caught by these special boats because it's so shallow here that you cannot even use a propeller. They were caught freshly for us today and they can only be eaten in this part of Japan. So, Kabeoze. Hi. Wow. They really are striped. Look at that. Big too. <gasps> it's so stripy that it's even stripy inside. Oh, yeah. Wow. Hi. <gasps> Lucky mask. That is so good. 
I don't know if it's all of the scenery that we've seen today or if it's just that they're actually really, really good, but these are some of the best prawns I think I've ever eaten. <laughs> this is literally like the rarest food you'll ever eat, probably. Mmm, so sweet. Right? Arigatou <laughs> Right? So this place is Betsukai City, right? Mm -hmm. Another world in Japanese is Betsukai. It's like almost the same. <laughs> it is weird. This place really is like a whole other world. We were just at that dead graveyard of trees this morning and now we're sitting on a very, very alive wetland area. I don't know, being here has completely changed my idea of what wetland is. There's just so much variety. If you are interested in learning about Ramsar sites or wetlands in Japan or indeed around the world and how you can preserve beautiful places like this, then please check out our description and of course check back for more of our adventures mm -hmm. in nature around Japan. Hi, <laughs> <laughs>